now let us take the simplest mode in the cavity which is the tm010 mode so it is the fundamental mode in a pill box cavity so these are for uh, for the tm mode these are the fields here bz is equal to 0 and then ez has this value and from ez you can calculate the values of er e theta br and d theta so for uh, tm010 mode m is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 and p is equal to 0 so we put here everywhere m is equal to 0 p is equal to 0 so we see that this goes to 0 this also goes to 0 this goes to 0 so we are left with only e z and b theta so we just have the e z field and the b theta field so uh, you can write from here you can put in the values of m n and p so you will get b theta as minus j omega r c by x 0 1 c square e 0 j 0 prime uh, of x 0 1 r c by r okay and uh, using the uh, relation of the Bessel function that j prime 0 is equal to minus j 1 so we can write this we can write this in terms of j1 so we have just two fields ez and uh, b theta also notice that uh, they are so this factor j here this tells us that they are out of phase with each other so when uh, e0 ez is maximum at any location b theta is minimum and so on so this is how the fields look like in the cavity you have the ez field here it is maximum at the center and uh, it has to go to zero at the boundary because of boundary conditions and uh, b theta uh, field is or uh, they form field lines around the electric field lines so ez is j0 uh, of the form of j0 so if you plot uh, ez with r you see that it is maximum at the center and going to zero at r is equal to rc similarly b theta has a form of j1 so it is zero at the center and it increases like this uh, as the radius increases so only ez for a tm010 mode in a pillbox cavity only ez and b theta fields are present so both ez and b theta they have variation with r only so since m is equal to zero and p is equal to 0 there is no variation in theta and z direction so there is variation with r only and the resonant frequency so you can calculate the resonant frequency from this formula you can put in the values of m n and p in the formula for the resonant frequency so you see that it is independent of the length of the cavity it depends only upon the radius of the cavity and it is inversely dependent upon the radius of the cavity so higher the radius smaller is the frequency and so on so this is how the fields will look like so as i said uh, it's a standing wave so that means the pattern is constant along uh, uh, along various directions but there is time variation and the time variation is like this so this is uh, ez field and this is b theta field okay and uh, uh, since the electric and magnetic fields are out of phase with each other so you see that uh, the variation in time is like this okay so you have a pillbox cavity let's say it is in the tm010 mode and uh, and so the electric field is like this there is a, of course a theta uh, magnetic field in the theta direction also but it is zero at the axis so let's say this is the axis now the field variation with time is like this and we have already studied that how using this type of field pattern we can accelerate charged particles okay so we saw that we need not use the whole positive cycle for acceleration because the whole uh, even though the whole uh, positive cycle will produce acceleration but there is phase stability only in this part that means in your if you have to choose your synchronous phase between minus pi by 2 and 0 from 0 to pi by 2 there is acceleration in this region but there is no phase stability so you have to choose your synchronous phase in this region also you do not use the entire region for acceleration because then some particles will see a field that is zero some particles will see a field that is maximum and there will be a huge spread in the kinetic energy of the charged particles which you do not want so you use only a small portion of the cycle for acceleration so let's say this portion 
okay so now the field in this cavity is uh, changing like this so you want the particles or the beam to see just this part of the electric field so as the field is increasing you inject your beam bunch at the time when the phase of the field at the center here is phi s so then the bunch sees this field it gets accelerated and it comes out so this length of the cavity can be adjusted accordingly in actual practice the cavity is uh, shaped to have to concentrate the electric field in the region near the axis so it is shaped like this to reduce this gap because we have already studied that the transit time factor depends upon the gap and how high an energy gain you get depends upon the value of transit time factor smaller the uh, smaller the gap higher is the transit time factor so normally this is shaped the cavity is shaped like this to increase the transit time factor so as the field is increasing if you inject the beam bunch into the gap at the time when the phase of the field is phi s it will see the right field and get the energy gain so electric field in the pillbox cavity for a tm010 mode is in the z direction it is constant along the z direction so you, along the axis of the cavity there is no variation in the electric field along the length of the cavity and the electric field has a sinusoidal variation in time so we inject the beam into the cavity when the phase of the electric field is phi s and in this way we can accelerate the beam okay now uh, we can also have a long cylindrical copper cavity in the tm010 mode so instead of having just a small pillbox cavity we have a huge big pillbox cavity okay and uh, you know that the frequency of the mode does not depend upon the length of the cavity so you can have a long cavity like this and inside that you put in the drift tubes okay and um, you adjust the distance from the center of uh, uh, center of one gap to the center of uh, other gap as equal to beta lambda so that means the particle will move from here to here in time t so again the field inside here so there is an electric field in the z direction so the field is increasing with time and you inject the uh, the charge particle in the first gap here at the time when the phase is phi s here so it sees the right field and it gets accelerated and then for the remaining part of the time from here to here that means time t it spins inside this drift tube and then it comes out here and sees the right field again okay it sees the right field again and then it gets accelerated again again it spins the time uh, t, uh, time capital t inside this comes out here sees the right field and gets accelerated so in this way you can have uh, uh, you can have several uh, drift tubes like this and you know that uh, field cannot penetrate inside the hollow conductor so inside this the uh, bunch or the particle beam will be shielded from the electric field it will see the electric field only in these gaps and get accelerated so this is the withdraw uh, sorry the alvarez type of st structure and this is known as the drift tube lenac or the dtl so this is what was proposed by alvarez so he said take these drift tubes and put this in a high q cavity and use the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic waves so the electromagnetic waves are now forming mode inside the cavity and in the tm010 mode there is electric field along the z direction okay so uh, you can use the electric fields associated with these uh, electromagnetic waves inside this cavity and use it now for acceleration so uh, this is a picture of a drift tube lena these are the drift tubes so there are several drift tubes here so this is the beam hole through which the beam goes there are gaps between the drift tubes so the drift tubes shield the beam bunch from the undesirable part of the rf electric field and the beam is uh, uh, the beam is like um, in the transverse direction it tends to spread it's like a ray of light so the beam tends to spread in the transverse direction so it needs to be focused so just like a ray of light is focused using uh, lenses here we have quadrupoles which we will see in future lecture 
they are used for focusing the beam so there are inside these drift tubes there are quadrupoles which are used for focusing the beam in the transverse direction so let's see an animation of the drift tube linac so this is the drift tube linac this is the tank these are the drift tubes so this is the beam it gets accelerated in the gap here and these drift tubes they contain magnets which is used for focusing the beam in the transverse direction okay so these boundary conditions so when we said that the tangential component of electric field is zero or the normal component of magnetic field is zero this is assuming a perfect conductor however in real life we do not have perfect conductors we have good conductors and in good conductors the field penetrates inside up to a distance equal to the skin depth so the field penetrates uh, inside the conductor so this is the conductor okay and it uh, dies down exponentially so uh, the distance the field penetrates up to a distance equal to the skin depth and this depends upon the conductivity of the material so that is why in order to have low skin depth a high conductivity material like copper is used for making these cavities and because uh, the fields penetrate up to a certain um, skin depth surface currents will flow through the um, uh, through the uh, cavity material and this gives rf surface resistance so rf surface resistance is simply one upon the uh, conductivity multiplied by the skin depth so Uh, because of this surface resistance now and the currents flowing on the surface of the cavity there is a power dissipated in the cavity so whatever power you are feeding into the cavity or whatever uh, electromagnet so these electromagnetic waves that you put inside they carry power which is used for setting up the field in the cavity so you have a cavity so you put in some rf power that is the total power part of the power is dissipated in the structure okay it is dissipated because the fields are penetrating up to a distance equal to the skin depth and there is some rf surface resistance so this part of the power is dissipated in the structure the dissipated power can be calculated from this formula so here it is half rs rs is the rf surface resistance and then taking the surface integral of h square over all surfaces of the cavity okay so this is uh, uh, this is how you can calculate the power dissipation then some power whatever power you are feeding into the cavity a part of the power goes to the beam so beam power can be calculated as the beam current into the energy gain so whatever is the energy gain in the cavity multiplied by beam current so beam is like a flow of charged particles and moving charge constitutes a current so this is known as beam current so whatever power you are feeding inside the cavity part of it is dissipated in the structure and part of it is stored in the cavity which is used for acceleration and that is given to the beam so total power total power that is given to the cavity is the sum of the dissipated power and the beam power so this is how you power um, power an rf linac so let's say you have a cavity this could be uh, any type of accelerating cavity it could be a pill box cavity or it could be a drift tube linac or any other structure okay so first you decide to what energy ranges you want to accelerate with charged particle and then you design the cavity so you decide what frequency you want to operate it at and then you get a source at the same frequency so if the frequency let's say you want to operate this in tn010 mode at some frequency f0 so you get an rf power amplifier which could be a klystron a solid state power amplifier or uh, uh, any other power source so at the same frequency so in other words it will give you electromagnetic waves high power electromagnetic waves at this frequency you use a wave guide you know that wave guides can be used for propagation of electromagnetic waves so the uh, electromagnetic high power electromagnetic waves produced here are propagated through a wave guide into the cavity now if this frequency f0 matches the frequency f0 in the cavity of the tm010 mode which depends upon the dimensions of the cavity then the field is set up corresponding to the tm010 mode so that means you have uh, electric field in the z direction so this you can use for 
uh, acceleration. Now, if the power is coming at any other frequency, so remember the cavity will not accept any other frequency, it will accept power at the fre uh, frequency of the corresponding mode only. So if it is coming at any other frequency, it will be reflected back. So the power, if it is reflected back, it, uh, it, can, uh, it can go back and damage the RF amplifier. So for that, a device called circulator is put here in between. The circulator is a one-way device, so it will not allow the reflected power to go back into the klystron. It will direct it in another direction towards an RF load. So this power now gets dissipated in the load. So uh, now if you are able to, now if you are able to send in power to this cavity at the right frequency, this power is all. Uh, it all enters into the cavity and it sets up the right mode. So you will have electromagnetic fields. You have an EZ component here. You have a B theta component here. And this it has a time variation like this. So some of the power will get dissipated in the structure. And part of the uh, power is going to set up these fields. When the beam comes here, it draws power from these fields and gets accelerated. And... Uh, it gets an energy gain, let's say delta W. So power going to the beam is given by the beam current into delta W. Okay. Now let us discuss some figure of merits of the cavity. So while designing the cavity, we have to optimize certain figure of merits. So one uh, important figure of merit is quality factor. So this we saw, we were seeing right in the beginning. So uh, Alvarez had proposed in order to solve the problem of the withdrawal enac where the uh, so in the withdrawal enac if you remember the uh, voltage applied to the drift tubes there was direct voltage time varying voltage that was applied to the drift tubes so when you try to accelerate it to high energies so uh, in order to keep the cell length reasonable you increase lamb uh, you decrease lambda or in other words you increase the frequency and the structure started radiating so it did not store energy in the fields in between the gaps instead it started radiating energy like an antenna so to take care of that problem Alvarez suggested that you take these drift tubes and you put it inside a high Q cavity so this is the parameter quality factor uh, high Q cavity and uh, you use the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic waves in the cavity so what is the quality factor the quality factor is defined as the ratio of the uh, stored energy at any uh, uh, frequency, the ratio of the stored energy to the power dissipated in the cavity. So the aim of the uh, cavity design is to maximize the value of uh, quality factor. So if you maximize this, that means you are minimizing the power dissipation and you are maximizing the stored energy in the cavity. The stored energy in the cavity is given by this expression. It is uh, half mu zero integral over the entire volume of the cavity of x square. And power dissipation, uh, we have already seen, it is half Rs and in surface integral of x square over all surfaces of the cavity. So Q0, by putting these two in the expression for Q0, you can find out the value of Q0. So, uh, so you see that the volume integral comes in the numerator and surface integral in the denominator. So it is, uh, the quality factor is high for a geometry for which the volume to surface ratio is high. The quality factor is uh, also defined as 2 pi times the number of RF cycles it takes to dissipate the energy stored in the cavity. So this expression here can be written as Q0 is equal to omega u. And power dissipation is simply du by dt. Okay, so uh, from here you can write u is equal to q0 by omega du by dt. So from here, uh, from here you can get uh, this expression by by uh, taking the integral of this. You can get this expression. So it means that. If you, uh, uh, if you store the energy in the cavity, the energy stored in the cavity, how long it takes, if you remove the RF source, how long it takes for that energy to dissipate. 
okay so now as we have seen the quality factor is defined by this expression so now here if you notice rs is the rf surface resistance this is the only quantity that depends upon the material okay uh, others other parameters are all geometry parameters they do not depend upon the material properties so we define a parameter g which is q0 into rs so we multiply this quality factor by rs and we get a uh, parameter which is now independent of the material properties it now this depends only upon the uh, geometry of the cavity so this is known as the geometry factor <clears throat> the next figure of merit is the shunt impedance this is a figure of merit that is uh, in independent of the excitation level of the cavity so it measures the effectiveness of producing an axial voltage v0 for a given power dissipation okay so it is v0 square the voltage axial voltage in the cavity divided by the power dissipation so it determines how much acceleration one gets for a given power dissipation then uh, you sometimes define the effective shunt impedance because we are more interested not in knowing just the voltage but the energy gain in the cavity and energy gain depends upon voltage multiplied by the transit time factor okay so energy gain is determined not only by the voltage it is also determined by the transit time factor so um, the peak energy gain of the particle it occurs when phi is equal to 0 so peak energy gain because here the field is maximum so let's take phi is equal to 0 and then uh, we multiply rs with t square so uh, you are multiplying here v0 t square so this is rs into t square this is the effective shunt impedance then uh, for long structures we are interested in knowing the shunt impedance per unit length so you simply uh, uh, take the shunt impedance and you uh, uh, divided by so you have the shunt impedance and divided by the length so this will give you the uh, effect uh, the shunt impedance per unit length so this is equal to v0 square by the power dissipated n so this can be written as v0 square uh, you can write this as e0 square l square pl so this is equal to e0 square p by n so uh, the shunt impedance per unit length is often useful for long structures and similarly you can have effective shunt impedance per unit length so you can just multiply z with t square so this gives you uh, the idea about the energy gain as well so one of the main objectives of cavity design is to choose the geometry such that you have to maximize the effective shunt impedance per length so and this is equivalent to maximizing the energy gain in a given length for a given power loss now if you see the shunt impedance and quality factor in both of these uh, both of these the power dissipation comes in the denominator so now we define a parameter r by q where we uh, divide r with q so the power dissipation in the denominator in both the cases uh, is cancelled out so again we get a quantity which is independent of the Uh, material of the cavity it again depends only on the geometry so this r by q measures the efficiency of acceleration per unit uh, stored energy at a given frequency and uh, you can also use uh, zt square by q either of these ratios are useful because they are functions of only the cavity geometry and independent of the surface properties which determine the power law so let's say if you are making a if you have designed a cavity and you want to before fabricating the actual cavity you want to make it in a cheaper material a prototype in a cheaper material so you can measure you can uh, make that cavity and uh, you can measure uh, so the quality factor the shunt impedance will not come out to be this uh, as it is for the uh, actual cavity but r by q depends only on the geometry so it will give you a good idea about your design then another factor that we consider in the design is the kilpatrick limit now at uh, high fields room temperature cavities they suffer electric breakdown just like uh, in dc uh, in dc accelerators there was a breakdown so there the breakdown was at a very high voltage 
but here also there is some breakdown so kilpatrick analyzed the data on rf breakdown and he defined the conditions that result in breakdown free operations the results were given by an empirical formula uh, this is a, a formula which is given by um, boyd so it says that at any given frequency this is the value of the kilpatrick limit so if you plot this um, formula um, so here this is at different frequencies this is the value of the kilpatrick field so in any cavity let's say we have a tm010 mode so you have an electric field here now uh, let's say at any sharp corner here the local electric field could be quite high here the local surface electric field could be quite high here so for a given value of the accelerating field there could be a surface electric field at any location in the cavity which is uh, higher than the breakdown limit so the design aim is to keep this value of the peak surface electric field less than the kilpatrick limit so kilpatrick said that if you for a given frequency you calculate the kilpatrick limit and uh, you keep the value of the peak surface field below this limit then breakdown will not happen so uh, this was given this uh, this formula has been given long back in the uh, 50s now with uh, improved vacuum improved surface conditions you can afford to be uh, more brave so now the value of the surface field that is allowed is bravery factor some bravery factor multiplied by the kilpatrick limit so you could afford to go higher than the kilpatrick limit given by this formula okay so typically the values of b are in the range of 1 to 2 okay now let's see for the tm010 mode uh, let's just analyze it uh, in little more detail so the electric field is given by this formula ez and b theta is given by this formula the variation is shown here so the electric field is maximum where j0 is maximum so if you see j0 j0 is maximum at r is equal to 0 so the electric field is maximum at r is equal to 0 it is maximum at the axis the magnetic field is maximum where j1 is maximum so the value of j1 is maximum if you see the uh, value of j1 is maximum somewhere here it is at 1.841 and uh, this corresponds to a value of 0.5819 here so mag magnetic field is maximum wherever 2.405 r by rc is equal to 1.841 okay so magnetic field is maximum at the value of uh, r equal to this at the cavity wall that means at r is equal to rc so we can put here r is equal to rc and calculate the value of the magnetic field we have b theta as e0 minus e0 by c j1 of 2.405 and value of j uh, j1 2.405 is 0.5191 so you can calculate from here the maximum values of the electric field and magnetic field so electric field is maximum here magnetic field is maximum somewhere here not uh, at the boundary and you can also calculate the value of the magnetic field at the boundary the power dissipated in the uh, pill box cavity is given by rs by 2 surface integral of h square so if you integrate uh, over the entire surface so you have the out, uh, you have the uh, outer wall of the cavity as well as the end walls of the cavity so power on the outer wall is given by rs by 2 h square wall into the area so you can calculate it here power on each end wall can be again calculated uh, and you can use these identities and calculate so the total power dissipated here is given by this expression so the stored energy in the cavity is given by half mu zero integral of h square uh, over the entire volume of the cavity so you can calculate this and uh, this comes out to be here the power dissipated we uh, just calculated comes out to be this and from this you can calculate the quality factor of the cavity so just summarizing whatever we have learned today 
टीई एम एन पी एंड टी एम एम एन पी मोड्स आर एक्साइटेड इन अ पिल बॉक्स कैविटी सो बोथ टीई एंड टी एम मोड्स कैन बी एक्साइटेड द वेरिएशन ऑफ द फील्ड इन द थीटा एंड जेड डायरेक्शन हैव साइनोसॉइडल डिपेंडेंस इन द आर डायरेक्शन द फील्ड हैव अ बेसल फंक्शन टाइप ऑफ वेरिएशन एंड वीव ऑल्सो सीन दैट टी ई एम एन जीरो मोड डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन द पिल बॉक्स कैविटी बिकॉज बाई बाउंड्री कंडीशन टी ई एम एन जीरो मोड गोज टू जीरो ऑल फील्ड इन दिस मोड गो टू जीरो सो दिस मोड डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन द पिल बॉक्स कैविटी इन अ गुड कंडक्टर द फील्ड पेनिट्रेट टू द सर्फेस ऑफ द कंडक्टर इक्वल टू द स्किन डेप्थ ड्यू टू सर्फेस रेसिस्टेंस द पावर इज डिसिपेटेड इन द कैविटी वॉल्स so whatever power you feed in the cavity part of it goes up goes in um, setting up the fields and uh, is given to the beam as beam power and part of it is dissipated in the cavity as power dissipation so in tn010 mode in the pill box cavity we have only ez field that is constant along the length of the cavity and a b theta components so the field is time varying this ez field can be used for acceleration you can also put in drift tubes inside this cavity and this structure is called the drift tube linac as was proposed by alvarez and this can be used for the acceleration of charged particles the aim of the cavity design is to maximize the quality factor and the shunt impedance so this uh, uh, in this lecture we have tried to understand how using the electromagnetic uh waves the electric fields of the electromagnetic waves it is in a cavity it is possible to accelerate charged particles so you need not apply voltage directly to the drift tubes you can use uh, the time varying fields of the electromagnetic waves in the cavity in the next lecture we will see acceleration using traveling waves so you know that in a wave guide uh, the waves are traveling waves and we'll also study about periodic accelerating structures